Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. A 68-year-old female is found at home hypotensive, blood pressure is approximately 80 over 60, and confused. Um, on lab results, you find that sodium is 130, potassium is 2.6, chloride is 70, bicarb is 50, BUN is 40, and creatinine is 1.7. The ABGs have a PO2 of 62, PCO2 of 47, and the pH is 7.63. Which the following is the acid-base disorder that this patient is suffering from? Well, we mentioned the pH is 7.63, so you know that there's an alkalotic process going on, correct? And the bicarb is 50, so it's ex excessively high here. Um, this is a metabolic alkalosis. Now, another question is, which lab test is most useful in determining the etiology of um, the acid-base disorder for metabolic alkalosis? Is it urine sodium, urine chlori chloride, urine pH, or urine potassium? The answer here is urine chloride and we'll go over why exactly but in metabolic alkalosis you need the urine chloride to determine the specific etiology. Also a 43 year old female presents with hypertension, edema, hyperlipidemia and a deep venous thrombosis on her left leg. Which of the following is not necessarily needed to diagnose nephrotic syndrome? Is it edema, hyperlipidemia, 24-hour urine albumin greater than 3 grams or hypertension. This question actually is asking you if you understand the definition of nephrotic syndrome. The answer is going to be hypertension. Now let's go over some of these case scenarios in a little bit more detail. The In the first case, patient with metabolic alkalosis, um, the, some of the things you want to keep in mind are that the respiratory compensation was limited by the hypoxic drive. Usually when the PCO2 rises to the high 40s or the low 50s, hypoxic drive is stimulated to maintain a PO2 of greater than 60. And again, keep in mind a brief differential for metabolic alkalosis. Upper GI loss above the ligamentotrites, renal losses due to diuretics, um, increased blood pressure um, causing caused by primary hyperaldosteronism, Cushing's disease, um, Barter syndrome. So variety of things can cause metabolic alkalosis. Remember that respiratory acidosis cannot be the primary abnormality with the high pH. And metabolic alkalosis plus respiratory acidosis is excluded because the increased PCO2 represents appropriate compensation. And understand that this patient had a low blood pressure and metabolic alkalosis, and therefore her disorder is due to either a GI loss, such as vomiting, or renal loss from furosemide use, as an example. The urine chloride will be low in the former and high in the latter, um, and urine sodium does not actually help us to differentiate GI from renal losses. And so in this case, the chloride is needed to uh, narrow down the specific etiology. Is it GI related or is it due to a renal loss? Also, while hypertension may occur in diseases causing nephrotic syndrome, its presence is not necessary for the diagnosis of the syndrome. Renal losses and catabolism of albumin lead to hypoalbuminemia and edema. Increased hepatic synthesis of lipoproteins leads to markedly elevated lipid levels. So that was a quick overview of several high yield points for nephrology. Good luck in your complex board preparation.